Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, about, we're about 12 practices into what we would still consider fall camp. Even though school has started, we're still into fall camp, doing a lot of our installations and um, still our double reps, trying to evaluate an awful lot of players out there. Um, excited about the progress that we're making. We're still uh, a ways away, in my opinion, from being a, a real seasoned team right now. Uh, but we're getting good work in, and we still have – you know, better part of two weeks before we play. And uh, I'm excited because the, the guys are practicing hard and, and, and uh, learning and, and continuing to improve. So uh, looking forward to uh, some football here in September. All right, we'll go on to Fritchin. Yeah, hey coach, uh, just a little house cleaning. How, how many players have tested positive for COVID during your recent testing? Um, I don't think any in the last few. Um, but I think uh, with all the students come back, we'll see how we're going to be. I think every institution is worried about that over the next uh, few weeks to a month with all the students coming back. When, when will that next testing period be for you guys? Uh, right now, we're every Wednesday. Okay. Who are some true freshmen that are really standing out for you right now? Uh, offensively, I would say uh, Deuce Vaughn is uh, really stepped out as a running back. Um, will Howard. Uh, as a quarterback, you had a number of young offensive linemen that are doing a good job, uh, but those two in particular uh, on defense, um, you know, we have some defensive backs. You know, defensively, we don't have that many true freshmen that are probably going to uh, help us, but there's a couple of defensive backs and uh, the two defensive ends from the Kansas City area, um, Felix and Nate, are doing a nice job as well. Thank you so much. Derek. Yeah, Coach, something that hasn't been discussed much is that you do have to replace your starting punter from last year. Uh, I guess what is the progress of that, and what do you kind of expect it to look like uh, on the opener of the season? Good question. It's kind of a work in progress. Devin was such a dynamic punter for us, and uh, Jack Bloomer right now is is competing with what you hope would be Ty Zentner, but Ty has been uh, a little banged up, and we hope to have Ty back either the end of this week or first part of next week um, to be able to compete a little bit more. Uh, we're, we're replacing an awful lot of our players on punt as well uh, within our shield and within our front line. And so it's been something we've spent an awful lot of time on. It's still an open competition uh, at punter. And so we'll play it out over the next few weeks and, and see who ends up being the guy. I know we're in fall camp, but obviously with the restrictions on recruiting, that's really impacted how that has kind of gone for you guys and all across the country. What are some of the kind of challenges with that? Or has there been any positives with the way that recruiting has gone as well? There's a ton of challenges, more challenges probably than positives, simply because you just don't get the the face-to-face -face, uh, interaction, whether it's the kids coming to campus for an unofficial visit, kids coming to campus for for camps, uh, the fact that uh, we're getting into playing some games in September and they're not going to be able to come visit the school. So in that respect, uh, I think it's difficult for all uh, student athletes when they can't get on campuses to, to get face-to-face -face interaction. In the same respect, I think we're doing as good a job as we can as far as reaching out and touching all those uh, recruits as often as we can. Uh, just Taylor Bratt and, and Chuck Lowe, we do a great job of uh, keeping us up to date and then as coaches using our social media platforms and texting and calling when we can to uh, stay on top of it as best we can. Kels. Hey, Chris, good to see you as always. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> have you had any additional players inform you that they want to opt out for this season in the last couple of weeks? We've had we've had a, a few, and like you said, we're going to support those decisions. Um, and then uh, we got to move forward with with the guys that uh, are are going to participate and play. But uh, rest assured, we've supported those guys, and we're going to continue to supply them with the the, the stuff they need from the academic side of things to the uh, mental health to uh, athletic training, whatever it may be. Um, you know, it's probably. I would think it's going to slow down, even though you just don't know simply because the NCAA came out and said this year really doesn't count. And so uh, when you opt out in a year that doesn't count, then, you know, we really got to make sure that we take care of those guys. 
Okay. Can you share with us who those players are? No, nah, not right now. Okay. Um, that was actually going to go on to my next question. Just mention it, but how, how do you plan on handling all this extra, extra eligibility knowing that any senior on your roster could conceivably come back next season? Something that we have not dove into yet. Uh, I know it came out on Friday and we mentioned it to all the players on, on Friday afternoon that, Hey, this is coming down uh, with a kind of a, a freeze year. Uh, but we were still learning more about it ourselves as coaches. And I think we have to let this year play out for those guys to see how many games they play. You know, the seniors are, is it, is it a full season? Do they want to continue to, to pursue football. Some of them are getting degrees or already have degrees and, and potentially have jobs. And so it's something that uh, we know we're going to have to handle here uh, later in the fall, but it's not something that uh, with all the things we have going on with trying to finish up what we would still consider fall camp, we just haven't uh, spent a lot of time on it. John. Yeah, Chris, just to follow up on that, I, with Skyler, do you have any kind of a feel for where he he might lean as far as that's concerned? Not at all. And haven't brought it up simply because his focus, I think, is as well as every other senior is on playing this year and not worrying about something that is, you know, in your in your control, but it's so far away that I think a lot of those seniors are saying, hey, let's just let's just focus on on this year and, and play as much football as we can. And so once again, we haven't talked about it as a staff uh, at all. Because uh, it just came down on Friday and we had practice on Saturday, gave the staff off on Sunday, reconvened with practice on Monday. It's just such a blur right now with uh, the amount of practice and meeting time that we have with ourselves that we this is not an area we've we've hit on yet. After having some time to watch him now in, in a handful of practices, what is the ceiling for what Briley Moore can really add to your offense? Well, Briley's going to be a, a definite impact player for us uh, this year. I think. You can tell his exceptional physical skills, uh, whether it's blocking the point of attack, running routes. Um, he's gained the respect from our older guys really, really fast just because of how he works uh, and uh, just the fact that he competes on every, on every down. So he's going to help us. It, it, uh, you can put him down as a tight end. You can flex him out. You can put him in the backfield. Uh, really impressed with his ability to learn what we're doing. Uh, and so I'm excited to see what kind of year he has. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bet. Seren. Uh, Coach, thank you for your time. I'm curious, um, the, the protocols that you put in place, you, know, you talk about the students coming back and that that's what everybody's kind of uh, worried about. And there's plenty of videos out there on social media of kids and not having the best behavior. What, what, what rules do you lay down uh, to your guys? Is it like nothing? Nobody leaves? Uh, you know, how, how do you – try to, uh, you know, keep your kids safe when maybe on, on a lot of campuses there are things going on that, that probably shouldn't well, be. Well, it's, it's going to be difficult. There's no question. There's still 18 to 22-year-old college students. And, and last Saturday uh, was really the first night we had off simply because we were in, we were in camp mode and we had uh, a lot of things into the evening. But uh, last Saturday, and we talked about it as a staff, we talked about it with our leadership council. We can't practice every Friday and Saturday night for the whole – uh, semester. And so some of that you, you have to put on the leadership. And uh, we, we've told the guys, you, you have to avoid large gatherings. You have to avoid groups of people where, they're, where people are not social distancing and they're not wearing masks. Well, you can't really say, well, is this, is this one okay and not okay? Guys, you guys know what we've been preaching and what our docs and athletic trainers have been preaching as well. You have to avoid the, the bars. You have to avoid the large gatherings. You have to avoid anything that would put yourself or your teammates in, in jeopardy. And then you, I know you mentioned the recruiting, and I know it's really early, uh, but have you seen any signs? There was a lot of people, uh, maybe a backlash when the Big Ten and Pac-12 said that they were going to shut down and not play that this was just going to crush them in recruiting, right? So if they're going to get crushed in recruiting, those kids have to be going or at least looking somewhere. Like I said, I know it's early, but are you seeing any kind of residual effect from their decisions that suddenly uh, there's a wave of players that are now open to you that maybe weren't before? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the, when you could see it is if they did open up recruiting and somebody would come to a game of, of one of the three power conferences that are playing to see a game day environment, even though it's not going to be a packed house, as opposed to not being able to get on campus uh, to some to a school that's not playing. I mean, that, that uh, could happen just on the flip side. 
It could happen in the spring where they're playing games and bringing people on campus and we're not playing games. So uh, I think uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how that landscape landscape plays out with the NCAA of how they're going to allow students or student athletes to come visit schools that are playing uh, and then what they're going to do in the spring as well. And then just real quick, one more the, on the offensive line, you, you've always had a great tradition and throughout your career of being able to pound the run and, and that starts with the guys up front. You, you're having to replace a number of guys. Can you just tell me what the kind of the mindset is or the theory or how you instill that, that even if you're not a returning starter, we're still going to run the ball and be effective? Well, we have a really good defensive line to go against and, and exceptional linebackers. So they're getting, they're getting sharpened every day as far as going against great competition. And uh, we're going to have eight, nine guys that are going to rotate in and play until we can find uh, and, and maybe – get the five or six guys that are that are going to be counted on for the whole year. But I've been really pleased uh, with uh, all the guys up front. Coach Riley's done a tremendous job. Noah Johnson, who's a senior, uh, that's a, a center for us, has kind of been the leader right now uh, as far as uh, being the vocal guy. But uh, I'm excited because we have interchangeable parts at guard and at tackle with probably seven or eight guys. Mitch. Yeah, Coach. Um, White Hubert mentioned last week that he's taking his courses online. Do you have an exact number or maybe even an estimate of how many of your players are taking the classes online this year? We were going to kind of let the guys decide that over the first couple weeks of class. And uh, I know a number of them, especially the older guys, have gone to just strictly online. There are a few older, older guys that uh, – uh, maybe we'll go to a class, see what it looks like, see their comfort level, uh, because there's a few classes that they really want to attend. And if they feel comfortable that uh, there's not many students in the class or social distancing, um, you know, we've encouraged those guys that that's okay to do it. Um, I think we're going to find out an, an exact number probably in another week as guys finish getting their classes locked in because there's some changes always in the first uh, two weeks of, of, of classes with adjusting times and adjusting schedules. So I, rough estimate, I'd say 70% of them are online. Fritchin. You're muted. You're muted. Nickelback, uh, what does the depth chart look like at that position right now? At nickel, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. I caught just the last half of it. Uh, Will Jones is doing a really nice job as a, as a redshirt freshman. He's put on about 25 pounds and um, done an excellent job of just learning what we're doing, uh, being more comfortable in the system. Uh, TJ Smith, uh, a true freshman, is playing there. DJ Render, a, a senior, is is playing there. Ross Elder is is playing some free safety as well as some nickel. So we're kind of using Ross in a couple of spots. I think we have really good competition. Everybody has a different skill set, uh, but uh, you know, Will is a tremendous man-to-man -man coverage guy uh, and uh, learning how to do some of the other things. So we have competition. We have some depth there. And also, uh, Keandre Thomas, we'll be talking with him for the first time today, I believe. What can you tell me about Keandre, and how has he been able to rise up? He's done a great job. He's a really competitive young man. Uh, excited for him that uh, he's taken the challenge to, to come to K-State to, to help our team, to help himself. Uh, he's, he's in the mix. He's going to play an awful lot for us. A real vocal guy. He's a physical corner. He gets his hands on guys. He's a he's a Good size young man, probably close to 200 pounds, 190, 95 pounds. So uh, we're really excited about Keandre joining our program, and he's going to have an impact this year. Adam. Coach, uh, Noah Johnson mentioned in his presser that with the inexperienced offensive line, he's not afraid of it, and he's happy to have a group of hard workers at the air to go through the growing pains together. Would you agree with that? And are you excited to watch this offensive line grow together? Well, there's no question that uh, Noah makes the, the group have a lot of fun. He's the, the guy that has all the energy coming into meetings and he's excited to practice and he challenges guys. And uh, I, I know that uh, all those guys want to prove that they, uh, that they belong, that they can play at this level, that uh, uh, 
um, that we won't miss a beat. Uh, I know that we lost a ton of experience, and it may take us uh, a little while to gel uh, with his, with a brand new group of offensive linemen. But uh, I, I'm excited about the athleticism uh, amongst the group. I'm excited about uh, uh, the physical style of play and the fact that we have, you know, at least eight or nine bodies, if not ten, that that really are getting a, a great look and. I know that Coach Riley wants to give everybody an opportunity uh, so that we can build more depth and have more guys uh, through a long season. And the two senior linebackers, Elijah and Justin, how are you seeing their leadership spread throughout the defense? Well, uh, for sure, Justin's the, the vocal guy, and uh, he is a guy that brings energy every day and gets everybody else excited. And, and Eli is a workman. He just he does his job, and you can tell when Eli's on the field because our defense is just that much faster. There's some plays that you think, well, they're going to be a good gain, and all of a sudden there's Eli, and it's a tackle for a loss. Or, uh, you know, somebody looks like they're open, and, and Eli can close ground and uh, get a pass uh, breakup. And so um, both of them are doing a great job. Both of them are excited about playing with each other, and, and they elevate our defense. Max. Hey, Coach, I'm sorry if you've already been asked this during camp here, but i um, curious, just are, are there any unique things that, that you guys are doing in, in practice or in your locker room or in your building um, that you just haven't done before in, in camp to kind of get ready for what's going to be a really unusual season? Everything has been unusual. Uh, every, I mean, we, we're using the visitor's locker room as well as the home locker room. Uh, so not everybody's together. Unless we use Bramlage, we don't have a team meeting. So we've only had a couple of team meetings. Uh, when we lift, we lift in groups of four as opposed to just offense and defense. It's four groups to lift in. Uh, position meetings, we're using um, the West Stadium Club because it's bigger areas. I mean, there's nothing that's been normal about the, about this camp. And the guys just have to overcome the adversity. And the practices have been as normal as we've had. But other than the practices, there's nothing that's normal. You know, when you go up to eat and you get in line and, and you know, somebody's serving you as, as opposed to you serving yourself in a buffet line and you have your mask on and then you go sit with your position, well, maybe I wanted to go sit with a quarterback and I'm an offensive lineman. Well, you can't do that. You sit just with the old lineman. They get tired of each other probably. But we're trying to do all those things to mitigate the spread and mitigate the virus. And so it's um, – Guys are probably getting used to it. It doesn't make it easy. It's just kind of our new normal. Is that different for coaches, too, that have done the same thing every year? Yeah, I, we're just – once you tell us what we got to do one day, we can be a creature of habit for the next two or three weeks on it. And, um, and that's just become our new adjustment to things. And, you know, you just – you got to go find somebody. You don't know where you're going to find them. You better look at their schedule. Are they group A lifting? Are they group B lifting? Are they group C? Are they – which locker room they're in? Where is their meeting room? You know, our wide receivers are up in the West Stadium Center. So, all of a sudden, I need to go find a wide receiver. It's going to take me a little bit of a hike. And so, then we've adjusted all of our time. Usually, you go right from a – special teams meeting to position meeting. Well, we have to add 10 minutes of travel time. And so everything's been a little bit different. Got time for a couple more, Kellis. With uh, Justin and Elijah on defense, these are two guys who've known each other forever. Can you see a special bond with them, with them when they're on the field together? Yeah, they communicate and they uh, feed off of each other uh, and they ask each other questions. It probably helped uh, Eli that he had to play the Mike linebacker position all last year where Justin has is, is been accustomed to that uh, um, they can help each other figure out how we're going to fit a play uh, as a run game example. But uh, I, I just think there's a great comfort level for each of them to have uh, – you know, their, their friend out there, a teammate out there that they've known for a long time, and they're excited to get to play together. And it, if I can, what, what was that first practice like when you got Justin back after such a long wait? Did you instantly tell the impact or the difference there? Well, from a vocal standpoint, without question, uh, I know that Justin being out of football as long as he was and missing spring ball, you know, he's got to work himself back into – football shape and work himself back into seeing things because you just don't see pictures and things come really fast. And so I, I've seen, I'm so excited for him when he 
first day out there, I was like, boy, this has been a long time coming, not having spring ball. And he was, you tell, he was just so excited and so blessed to be able to say, I get a chance to play football again. But I've seen over the last probably four or five practices, the impact he can have uh, as a football player because he's starting to get his legs back underneath him. He's starting to gain strength in his knee where he has more and more confidence. And, and as he does that, it makes us all better because uh, when he's playing at a high level, it makes our def defense that much better.